Good morning, everyone. Mr. Chen here. So, our objective today is to learn how to graph log logarithmic functions with tables. You watched a video yesterday with some that work already. Today, you'll get more hands on practice. So, let's start by completing the table for both functions as much as you can and graph them if you can. Stop the video and restart it when you're ready to watch the solution. All right. So, on the left side here, we should be pretty familiar with this particular one. I just want to start from the bottom. 2 to the second power is 4. 2 to the first power is 2. 2 to the zero power is 1. 2 to the negative 1 power is 1 half. And 2 to the negative 2 power is 1 fourth. Now, let's go ahead and see what we did for the logarithmic side. Um, one thing to keep in mind is, remember, log, for logs, you're always solving for the exponent exponent so here's i'm gonna write here i'm gonna rewrite this i'm gonna rewrite this log expression down here just to re quick review on what logs are log base 2x is equal to y and remember this y represents the exponent so we can go ahead and, co and then we can convert this to logarithmic form in this case our base is 2 so it becomes base 2 exponent of y equals x, right? And this is our logarithmic form here. And next thing is, in this case, it's actually much easier to plug in values for y and determine your x that way. Even though technically in the function, you're plugging in x to find y. But this time, since log, log is kind of the reverse of what we've been doing with, with exponential. So I'm going to pick the same values here in terms of um, negative 2. Oh, let me get it right writing. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And we can see that here 2 to the second power is 4. And then we have 2 to the first power is 2. 2 to, zero, two to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the negative 1 half power is 2 to the negative 1 power is 1 half. And to a negative two power is one fourth. Go ahead and compare and contrast these two functions for a second. What do you notice? What do you notice? I hope what you came up with was the fact that the x and y switch places. Take a look. All the x's here, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, for x in the exponential function is not the y for the log function. On the other hand, the y value of the exponential function now is the x value for the logarithmic functions. This reason is because they are called inverse functions. Inverse functions. Inverse functions. All right. Let's go and I'll, I'll talk about this even more. Let's go and graph these two um, functions. I'm going to graph one in red. And the other one in blue. All right, I'm gonna graph a red one first. Zero one, negative one, one one half. Two and negative two and one fourth. One and two. Two and four. So if I graph this first one, it looks something like this. Okay, let's graph the other one in blue. One zero. 2, 1, 4, 2, 1 fourth, negative 2, 1 half, negative 1. So if I go ahead and graph this, it looks something like this. Now, you can kind of see that this graph, they kind of mirror each other. They kind of mirror each other, right? But that mirror here is kind of this line in the middle. Let me go and draw it real quick. I'm going to draw in black here. That mirror is right here. And the equation of that line is y equals x. Because what's, what's happening essentially is you're reflecting, that keyword flipping, reflecting, you're reflecting across the y equals x line, and you're switching y and x. You're switching x to y and y to x. Okay? So that's one thing to notice when you're dealing with logarithmic functions. Go ahead and turn to the next page. 
All right. So once again, you can go ahead and pause the video and try to fill out as much of the table as possible on your own. And when you're ready, restart the video and we'll go over it. All right. So let's see this time. Um, one, one half the first power is one. One half this, oh, one half. There we go. One half the second power is one fourth. One half to the negative one power is negative two. One half to a negative two power is negative four, right? And when we're trying to grab this function right here, what we need to focus on is what's the parent function? What's the OG, right? What's the original one? The original one is just this portion, the log one half and x, right? That's what gave you the original function. We're going to take out all that extra stuff and we're going to save it for the next step, okay? Now, based off what we did earlier, we see that these two are inverse functions. The base, the base, x and x, right? So we know that we're going to flip the x and the y value. But we can also think about it this way. So if we plug in 1 right there, what we're really asking is 1 half to what power will equal to 1 for x. Once again, remember what log solve for? Log solve for the exponent. So if I plug in a 1 for x, I'm asking myself 1 half to what power will equal to x, which is 1 in this case. So 1 half to the 0 power will equal to 1. Right? So let's go ahead and switch them back and forth. Let's switch all the x's and switch all the y's. So all the, all the x's from the first function will go here. And all the others want to go there. And all the x's, all the y's from here will become all the x's over here. <clears throat> There's one thing you need to be mindful of. I'm kind of, I'm looking at this section right here, these two coordinates. Let's just show you something really quick. So if we're looking at log, oops, log base of 1 half, let's say you plug in negative 4, right? And we know that's, that equals some variable y. Sorry, that's some exponent. Once again, this y we know is the exponent. However, so we change the exponential form, 1 half to the y equals negative 4. So technically, we we're looking at, oh, Mr. Chen, isn't the y just negative 2? Well, let's check really quick. Let's check. So let's plug in that negative 2. So 1 half to a negative 2 power should technically equal to negative 4, right? But we learned this. We have a negative exponent. We flip the fraction. We make the exponent become positive. 2 squared is 4. And does 4 equal negative 4? No. And the way you think about it, well... If I, if I am, sorry, if I'm multiplying a positive number, one half in this case, over and over again with some other positive number, it'll never become negative. And that works for this one too. So actually, this is what you talk, learned earlier in the year about domain and range. In this case, a domain for a log function, um, a basic log function with just x right here, just x, a domain, the possible x value, is, it cannot be negative. So therefore, as a result, these two coordinates are not valid. I'm going to graph the three points that we do have in our um, graph so far. By the way, you can check on Desmos when you're done with this and just see if you, see what, if you, see, if you can kind of double check what I mean in terms of you can't be on the negative side, okay? So we have 1, 0 right there, 1 half, 1, 1 fourth, 2. So the graph kind of looks like this, okay? All right, we're finally now ready to look at the other graph right here. We're ready to look at this graph right here. We have to talk about the minus 1 and plus 4. If you look at the form of it, it looks a whole lot like what you did with exponential. So I have log base x minus c plus d, right? This is a general form. And this looks a lot like x minus h plus k. We, kind of, we all mean the same thing. Um, let's look at the C first. So we know what, is, what does the C do? Remind yourself. Yeah, it tells the graph is going left or right. And we also remember, hopefully, that when you see X plus C, that's going to the left. 
Because when you close your X, they always lie to you. So when you say plus C, it's really a minus C. So it's really a negative, so it's going to the left. And then when you see X minus C, it's really a positive, because X always lie. So I'd say going to the right. On the other hand, we have our K right here. What does that do? Oh yeah, that makes our graph go up or down. And this one's more straightforward. When it's a plus D, it's going up. When it's a minus D, it's going down. Okay, let's take a look at our actual equation here and what's happening. So if we look at our plus four, that's making your graph go four up. If you're going up, it's affecting the y-axis. So we're gonna add four to the y-values. So we're gonna add four to y. On the other hand, the minus three, no, the minus one, that's making you go one right, because it's really a plus one. When you go right and left, it's your x-axis, so we're gonna plus one to x. Let's go make those changes. So plus one to x, one plus one is two, one half plus one is one half, one four plus one is one one fourth. That's through the y's here, um, plus four, zero plus four, that becomes four, one plus four is five, two plus four is six. Let's graph it, I'm gonna graph this one in blue, two comma four, one half comma five, about right there, one and one fourth comma six, so my graph looks a little bit like this. As you can see, the change here, it moved up and shifted right. It moved up and shifted right, okay? So that's, go ahead and um, turn to the second page where your homework is. So your homework is these seven problems, number one through seven. I already, cro go, I already crossed, oh, go ahead and cross out the section I crossed out. I do want you to leave the asymptotes and x-intercepts there. Right, your job is to create two graphs at a time. I would like to see a parent function graph, if there, and then the change. Describe a change. Parent function graph and change. Parent function graph and change. Right, so I'm gonna draw in just for you. Parent function, and then the change. Make sure you. I should see two tables on all of them except the first one. This one you can have just one table. All right. I'll be checking this when I see you on Thursday. Have a good day.